Hey guys! Today we're going to be making this cute miniature panda cup or baby panda, so I really hope you'll enjoy. If you want to see a tutorial for some accessories or some toys, please let me know in the comments and let's get started. The first thing I did was make an armature to help support the clay and you can use any type of wire for this. I only made it so that it had the head and the front legs because sometimes depending on the pose, it's a lot easier to add the clay and work with the clay without the armature underneath. I added tin foil to the head which is going to save on clay but also give the clay a better grip. For the clay you can use any color you want because you can paint it after baking. A logical choice would be to use white but since that is a bit more difficult to see on camera I'm using this grayish tan color. You first want to add some clay on top of the tin foil and then you want to start working on the snout. To begin with it's really just a boxy looking lump of clay and then after adding it to the head you can start shaping it and removing some of the excess to give it the right size. If you have any questions about the tools I'm using when sculpting, I do have a couple of basics videos on this channel if you search for doll making or doll sculpting tools. The eyes I'm using are made from Palmer clay and I do have a tutorial on my channel so I'm going to link that in the info box. And these have been pre-baked before adding them to the sculpture. After adding the eyes I continued shaping the head. As I've mentioned in some of my other animal tutorials you do want the sculpture to be smaller than you want the end result just because if you are going to be adding the fur it's going to add some extra thickness and layers on top. Use a needle tool or a pointy dotting tool to mark off the nose and the mouth. And then you also want to take some small strips of clay and add these around the eyes as eyelids. Lastly, for the head, I added some more clay where I wanted the ears, just so that they're not going to be buried in the fluff. And I then added the ears on top. And also, if you feel like it's necessary, you can add some liquid clay to the joint between the ears and the head, just to add some extra strength. Once I was done, I pre-baked the head and then added some clay to the body. I also added the thighs or hind legs. And then lastly you want to add the paws or the feet. I did add some detail to the bottom of the two hind feet just because those are going to be slightly visible. I didn't add any detail to the bottom of the front feet or paws just because you're not going to see it when the panda is posed like this. And though I didn't show it in the video I also added some clay to the front legs. Use some off-white clay to make some claws and add these to all four paws. 
After baking, I painted the sculpture using acrylic paint, which is going to make it easier to place a fur in the right spots, although a panda is not the most difficult animal to place fur on. It is also going to help if you use a different color of clay than the fur you're going to be using, just in case the fur is not opaque or if you leave out some areas or don't cover them completely, you're not going to see it as much when the sculpture underneath has the same color as the fur. The fur I used for this project was black merino wool and then white angora, both of which are cruelty free. If you have any questions about the fur and fibers I use in my videos, I do have a video on it which I'm going to link in the info box. In that video I also show the glue I used to attach the fur, if that's something you have questions about. I first covered up the paws using black flocking powder and this is just the same type of fibers I used for the rest of the panda but cut into really tiny pieces. Then for pretty much the rest of the panda except from the very tip of the snout, I just applied the fur in small sections, let the glue dry and then trimmed off the excess. And as I've mentioned both in my last video but also a couple of my other animal tutorials, this is the part of the process that takes the longest. The sculpture itself is rarely that difficult to make or doesn't take all that long, but adding the fur and having the drying time of the glue does take quite a while. I really do enjoy this part of the process though, because this is when the sculpture really comes alive and the fur just adds such a nice touch. Because at this point I wasn't done adding fur to the entire body, I only trimmed off some of the length and the reason for this is that sometimes it's difficult to judge the length compared to the other sections when you haven't added the fur to the entire sculpture. Then once I was done I went over the body again and trimmed off some more fur if I felt it was needed. My favorite part of the furring process is always adding the fur to the head, just because you start off with a lion mane and then end up with a mustache or a goatee. At this point the panda is likely going to look pretty messy, so what I did was I took a few pieces of tape, then wrapped these around my fingers and used these to get rid of the excess. The shading I first went in with black acrylic paint and just used this to add a few details or mark off the mouth and then also added some shading around the nose or snout. Next I went in with soft pastels. I first used a yellowy golden type of color and this is just because pandas are very often not all that white. They do have some miscoloring, especially if they've been out playing, but the only really completely white and black pandas are the stuffed animals you see at toy shops. I also used a tiny bit of black pastel just to add some natural shadows. The last material or item I used for the shading was white acrylic paint and I used this both to create some highlights but mostly to create some texture in the fur. One of the questions I tend to get a lot when using acrylic paint on top of the fur is if this is going to make the fur less soft and technically it does act kind of like a hairspray so it is going to make the fur a bit more stiff. But these are not really meant to be used as a plushie or something you would pet a lot so it's not really a big deal. At this point I also added some fur to create a tail. I didn't create a proper tail just because the panda is sitting and is going to be covering it up, but I also felt kind of bad leaving the panda with no tail at all. Once you're done adding the shading you can finish off with a layer of fixative to protect the pastel, then seal the eyes with a glass glaze and you're done. 